again, folks. This is NixOS number 78. I'm going to talk about NixOS SystemD user services. Exciting. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to the person who supplied an issue to my configuration repository. GH Tau is his name. And my last video was about disusing this function called write Python 3 bin in favor of a function called substitute all to generate Python scripts. And he gave me a bit of a tip to uh, be able to use write Python 3 bin without having it do flake eight checking, which I frankly should have thought of. If you do want to use write Python 3 bin, you can put at the top of your script flake eight colon no QA. Uh, it'll do the flake eight checking, but it won't throw any errors. Thank you, GH Tao. On to today's business. I'm going to talk about system to user services and how they integrate with uh, NixOS Home Manager. This talkie script on the left-hand side entitled NixOS 78 will be available in a link in the description. System to user services are services that run as a normal user, like me, I'm Chris M, rather than the root user, although they're still managed by, by system D. I never really bothered to use this feature on systems that I that weren't Nix, but in Nix, it sort of feels like it's worth it. Uh, it's pretty simple to configure. And since I check it in, I can replay it on other systems. It's yeah, pretty useful. This feature works on NixOS and on non-NixOS systems, at least the ones that are managed by systemd. I'm going to talk about two scenarios that user services are useful in. The first is to run a program every so often. Let's say you want to be able to search for the packages that own a particular file. I talked about this utility in my tips and tricks video called NixIndex. It provides a command line tool named Nix locate that given a file name will return the derivations in your store that comply with that file name. libc, let's see if I can remember how this goes, so.6, yeah, there we go. This file is present in all these Nix store paths. That's its whole job in life. Uh, however, for Nix locate to work, you need to run this program called Nix index, which creates a searchable database that Nix locate can work against. And it's best to run Nix index every so often to re-index the database against your Nix store such that you can find the files that are actually on your file system added to your Nix store over time. Now we could just run Nix index every so often by hand, that would be fine. Uh, it takes maybe five minutes or so. You probably don't want to wait five minutes to run Nix index every time you want to run Nix locate. So it'd be nice if we could automate things such that Nix index runs every so often, let's say every day, every night. There's also no need to run Nix index's root. It's perfectly willing to be run as a normal user. So this, this, my friends, is a perfect job system to user services. In order to run something every so often, we need to find both a system to user service and a system to user timer that will run the service every so often. The home manager integration in Nix can help us with this. Now I'm not going to explain how to configure home manager in here. I'm going, going to presume that you already have home manager set up and you can add home manager -y things to a file somewhere. We are going to define uh, both the service called Nix index and a timer called Nix index in here. I'm going to go over here to my real configuration where I actually have it. Here we can see that we have the service defined, and then we have a timer defined that references the service. The service type should typically be one shot, and there is a very nice explanation of what a one shot service is here by Red Hat. It's a service that's not expected to run as a daemon. Usually system tries to restart things that, that are run as services, but when it's a one-shot service, it doesn't. Since it's being defined in this home manager configuration that is related to my user, it will also be run as my user. The exec start line here is the program that you run. We want it to run every so often. And in order to do so, we can define a timer. It is also called Nix index, but it is a system to user dot timers dot Nix index, not a system to dot users dot services dot Nix index. The thing that relates this to the service is the unit. It says, I am a timer for this unit. I want you to run this unit every so often. It will run on a schedule. And that's what this on calendar thing does. This means every night at 4 a.m. And it is wanted by timers target, which is boilerplate for, yes, it's a timer. I use the NixOS integration at home manager. So I activate the configuration via NixOS rebuild. Once I've done this, I can see the status of both the service and the timer by using system kettle. Uh, at this point, my Nix index is largely up to date every time I want to use my Nix locate command. For the record, if uh, the Nix timer service or the timer service you define doesn't show up as active, you may have to start it by hand and you can just do system all user art Nix index timer. 
that will typically happen only the first time you activate it uh, on a reboot it will be active so the second use case for system b user or services is to run a program as a daemon this is typically what people think of when they think of system d services these are programs that start and are not meant to exit i have a program that watches a directory for added media files and then it transcodes them for use in my video editor it's called watch intake it uses this i notify wait command that is part of i notify tools it watches a directory to see if files have been added to it or any of its subdirectories when it notices one it causes the media file to be transcoded into something my video editor can read i can execute it by hand in the foreground if i want to but that's no fun i just want it i just want it to be always running in the background so i have now set that up to run as a systemd service systemd user service the only difference between this and the other service is that it's not a one-shot service. It's a quote-unquote simple service, which means systemd doesn't expect it to exit. If it exits, it's an error. The exec start thing takes the watch intake program and passes it intake directory as, a, as an argument. Watch intake is defined up here, which is a Python program. It watches my home directory slash intake or new media files, and it is wanted by default target. This is just sort of boilerplate for any any given simple service we should be able to see its status i think it's running already by running system fiddle that is watch intake service and it looks to be running let's see if we can follow it by using journal control i wonder if i put a file in there so it did pick up on the fact that there are new files in there and it's starting to transcode them so that is running in the background all the time and it is a perfect use of a system d user service if this doesn't work for you again you may need to reboot just like the other service the timer service the home manager is a little fussy about system to user services at first activation we can actually stop this we see that it stopped we can start it again and it will start to run again i wish you great luck with your system to user service and thanks for watching